Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. My name's Jason and I'm your watch guy today. Now today I'm featuring a watch brand that I've never had on the channel before, but it's definitely one that you're going to recognize. Now I've ventured back into my dive watch collection because I don't think I've really featured enough of them yet. You've seen a lot of my automatic dive pieces and I love automatic pieces, but there's always a place in the collection for a good quartz watch. And when I say good, I mean it really needs to stand out to me. I really, really need to fall in love with a quartz watch to wanna buy it. And to be honest, when I saw this watch, I knew it was something that I really just had to get. And that's probably because it's the most automatic looking quartz watch that I've ever seen. Now that's a really confusing statement, I understand. But once you see it, you'll get what I mean. This is my Belova Seeking. Now this is a 300 meter dive watch. It also features an ultra high frequency watch. It is a 262 kilohertz movement. And once you see the second hand sweep, I'm sure you'll fall for it just like I did. So guys, I'm gonna turn this camera around and we're gonna get into this review. This guys is my Belova Seeking. The reference number is 96B228. It's packing a Belova 262 kHz movement. And as I said in the intro, you can see that second hand ticking around. It's so, so smooth. It moves as if it's an automatic movement. And not just an automatic movement, it moves like an excessively expensive automatic movement. Look at the sweep on that second hand, it's just absolutely magnificent. As soon as I saw that, I knew I had to have this in my collection. I had to have this watch. So, let me get into the dimensions of this first. It is a 49mm watch, that's what it came in on my measurements. It is 14mm thick, that's including the bezel and crystal and case back. Lug to lug. It is 54 millimeters and lug width comes in at 24 millimeters. Now it is a diver's watch, but it is airing on the upper end of the size spectrum. Now I will mention from the off that this isn't the band that comes with the watch. This is one that I put on myself. I bought this second hand with a leather strap on it and I wanted to get the rubber one back on it. This was the best one that I could find at the time. So this is the one that I got. So as we move into the casing of this watch, this is a stainless steel case, as you'd expect. It's got a mixture of a high polish finish on parts and a brushed finish. I think it's really nice that they've mixed the finish on this. As you can see, there's a light brushed effect on the side here with high polished lugs. And on the opposite side, we again have a slight brushed effect with high polish on the upper end of the lugs and casing. It is a very heavy watch and it feels like a very well built case. Now we have really large crown guards here that kind of curve to meet the crown, which I really like. It really gives a nice angular look to the casing of this watch. And as you probably know from my early reviews on Samurai's, I love an angular case. Now we have a screw down crown. It has a really smooth movement while you're setting the hands. Just set this to the usual position. Obviously the first setting is for this date function. We have a screw down case back with the Seeking logo there, as well as the usual types of specifications listed around the edge of the case back. Now this casing provides this watch with a 300 meter water resistance. So it is a fully fledged dive watch. Now we have a stainless steel effect on this bezel here. There's no bezel insert. This is a fully machined piece. We have these little screws at the odd intervals, five, 15, 25, so on, so on, so on. And Adabix at the even intervals, 10, 20, 30, so on. We have a really nice triangular indice at the 12 position on the bezel. Now this is a 120 click unidirectional bezel. As I'm just spinning that round there, you can hear it has a really nice tool type of click to it. It's a really nice bezel action on this. No play in it. Now this is all finished with this sapphire crystal here. 
that is a nice sign of quality in this watch. As you know, one of my main moans of Seiko divers is that they have a hard lex crystal instead of a sapphire crystal. So it's nice to see that this is utilizing a sapphire crystal. Now as we move into this dial, you can see it's a very nice flat black dial. As you can also see, there's a nice indent on the inside of the dial. So there's a nice raised effect, nice 3D effect to this dial, which is nice to see. It's nice to see that they've actually put some thought into the design of the dial. We do have printed indices instead of applied indices on this one. They are fully loomed with a orange type of border on the outside of them. And as you can see, there is an Arabic at 12. That is the only Arabic on the dial. We have the Blover logo printed at the 12 o'clock, seeking 300 meter at six. And as you can see just below that, a 262 kilohertz movement. That's what that's referred to. And that is what gives this lovely sweeping effect to the second hand. As you can see, we have a sword style handset. Now this handset has a negative cutout halfway up and then loomed finishes on the end. We have an arrowhead on the hour hand. The borders of the tips of these hands are in yellow, which I think it would have been nice if the finished it off in orange, just like the dial, but you can't have everything that you want. It does match this 262 marker at the six, which I guess has a bit of continuity through the watch. This second hand has a really lovely sweeping effect, as you can see, and it's owed to that 262 kilohertz movement ultra high frequency quartz movement. Now we have an arrowhead effect at the tip of the second hand and a fin in the stainless steel finish at the bottom, which I think is really nice. I think it gives a little bit of an ocean type of vibe to this watch, which is great considering it's a dive watch. To finish off, we have this date window here bordered in orange again. Always nice to have a date function on a watch, I think. I'm not sure I actually own many without date functions. I think it's a pretty common thing to have on a watch nowadays. Now finishing off, we have this chapter ring around the edge of the dial. It's raised to give, again, a nice 3D effect with the markers in white. Now I'm not gonna go into the band on this watch. That's just because I've added it to it and I don't think it'd be fair to really give a review on that. They're quite easy to pick up on eBay if you wanted to get yourself one. And they're quite comfortable on this, to be fair. Now I'm going to give you a little wrist shot before I go into the moan section. So this is the Belova on my quite small wrists. As you can see, it's a massive watch. And I wanted to get this wrist shot in before I did my moan section because it's one of my moans. So this watch is obviously way too big for my wrists. Now I have worn larger divers watches in the past, but this one is definitely on the wrong side of my outer limit. It's a lovely watch. Unfortunately, it's just way too big for me. Obviously, that won't be the same for everyone. And if you do have a much bigger wrist than mine, this will probably be perfect for you. Now, my second moon is this date window. I'm just gonna zoom in again. It's positioned between the four and the five hour indices, which I don't mind. That position on many watches i think it's a nice switch up from the usual three hour position but this one seems way too close to the five hour indice and way too far away from the four hour indice i just feel like it'd be a better fit if it was in the center so it, it kind of throws me off a bit it's it's a little bit annoying for me now my final moan for this watch is one that I hate to have because it's one of my favorite features on a dive watch, but it's this bezel. Now, it's got a lovely click to it, so it's not that. I don't mind that it hasn't got an insert and it's just stainless steel. I think that's a really nice feature. It's the fact that you can't really grip it properly. Like, your hands just kind of slip as you twist it, and it doesn't give me very much confidence in using the bezel. As you can see, it's high polished stainless steel on the sides of it, and maybe that's why it slips a little bit when you try and turn it, but that is a little bit of a letdown for me. So guys, that's my review on the Blover Sea King. Now, I love this movement. I think it's absolutely fantastic. The sweep on it is just absolutely gorgeous. And I wish, I just wish it was a better size for me. It's just not. And I wanted to get this review done now 
because I think this watch is very soon to be leaving my collection. Unfortunately, I just can't wear it on a daily basis. It just doesn't fit my wrists properly. So I think I'm gonna recycle the money and pick something else up that probably does. Now guys, if you wanted to pick this watch up now, you'd be looking at around 270 pounds. I believe H. Samuel have a sale on right now and it's available there. Would I pay 270 pounds for this watch? I'm not too sure. And that's probably because it's kind of hindered my view of it with it being so large. If this is your type of style and you love really oversized watches, I think it really does have something to offer at that price range. That UHF movement is fantastic. Like you don't understand how amazing it looks until you actually have it in your hands. It's just a lovely effect to have on a watch. But personally, I think you should probably be looking to pick this up sub 200 pounds, maybe on the second hand market. I think at that price, it's an absolute bargain. If you really, really do love the watch, 270 probably isn't too much to pay. Now guys, just to finish this off, I asked you in the last video to vote for a watch that you wanted to see me review. Now I also put that vote to Facebook. In the YouTube comments section, it was quite even. There was a vote for each of them, I believe, aside from the Caddison. But in my Facebook poll, the clear winner was the Felida Moonwatch Homage. So I have ordered that watch and it is on its way to me. Hopefully that will be here in the next two weeks. Thank you very much for voting and I hope you appreciate the review when it comes. Now, if you've liked this video, guys, please do subscribe to the channel. I've recently just got over 200 subscribers, which is amazing because I only got to 100 about two weeks ago. So thank you very much for all that support. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you in the next one.